When I was a small boy, I used to haunt that section of London around the British Museum. And one day I came across a shop which had a notice over the window which said philosophical instruments. Even as a boy, I knew something about philosophy, but I couldn't imagine what philosophical instruments could be. So I went up to the window and there displayed were chronometers, slide rules, scales, and all kinds of what we would now call scientific instruments. Because science used to be called natural philosophy. Because, as Aristotle says, the beginning of philosophy is wonder. Philosophy is man's expression of curiosity about everything, his attempt to make sense of the world primarily through his intellect. That is to say, his faculty for thinking. And thinking, of course, is a word used in many ways and is a very vague word for most people. But I use the word thinking in a very precise way. By thinking, as distinct from feeling or emoting or sensing, I mean the manipulation of symbols, whether they be words, whether they be numbers, or whether they be other such signs as, say, triangles, squares, circles, astrological signs, or whatever. These are symbols. Sometimes a symbol is a little bit less abstract than that, as when you get a mythological symbol, like a dragon. But all these things are symbols, and the manipulation of symbols to represent events going on in the real world is what I call thinking. Thinking is a linear process, like writing. One thought after another, as we say, you can only think of one thing at a time. But well, that's too slow for understanding anything at all. Much too slow. And our sensory input is much more than any kind of one thing at a time. And we respond with a certain aspect of our minds to the total sensory input that's coming in, only we are not consciously aware of it. But nevertheless, you're doing it. But what kind of you is this? It certainly isn't John Doe, that little ego freak. And so if I ask you, who are you really? And you say, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm John Doe. Oh, <laughs> you think so? John Doe, tell me, um, how do you happen to have blue eyes? Well, he says, I don't know. I, I, I didn't make my eyes. Oh, you didn't? Who else? Well, I, I have no idea how it's done. You have to have an idea how it's done to be able to do it. After all, you can open and close your hand perfectly easily. And you say, I know how to open my hand. I know how to close my hand because I can do it. But how do you? I don't know. I'm not a physiologist. Well, the physiologist says he knows how he does it. But he can't do it any better than you can. <laughs> so you're opening and closing your hand, aren't you? You don't know how you do it. Maybe you're bluing your eyes, too. You don't know how you do it. Because when you say, I don't know how I do it, all you are saying is, I do know how to do it, but I can't put it into words. I cannot, in other words, translate the activity called opening and closing my hand into an exact system of symbols. Into thinking. That's all. And actually, to translate the opening and closing of your hand into an exact system of symbols would take forever. Because trying to understand the world purely by thinking about it is as clumsy a process as trying to drink the Pacific Ocean out of a pint beer mug. You can only take it one mug at a time. And so with thinking about things, you can only think one thought at a time, one after another in series. So there's something a lot more to you than you think there is. That's why the Hindu would say that the real you is the self, capital S, the self of the universe. Because at that level of one's existence, one is not really separate from everything else that's going on.